a section is a profile of something in this case a building which is generated when an imaginary plane intersects or cuts through the building and there's something thrilling about sections about the way they reveal the beauty of the interior spaces the way they reveal the functionality relationships between adjacent spaces and also the connections that they reveal with the context or the exterior but if you have opened an archicad section for the first time you would know this for sure things must change and number 2 things must change for the better My name is Namara Alan and welcome to Nalitech Studio. If you haven't subscribed, I recommend that you do subscribe and hit the like button and let's get started on the three steps that you need in order to improve your sections. So for this project we are going to concentrate on working sections as opposed to sections for illustration. And secondly, we are going to use a project that we recently completed in my previous um uh, housing tutorial series. If you haven't watched it, I recommend that you do such that you find out how to come up with such interesting houses like these. So, the very first uh step that you need to take is to place the section Now that may sound easy but I know that it is well overlooked. Let's take two examples. One where someone decides to take a section like this. So let me use a 3D cutaway which you can find here on this icon here so enable that and then let's decide on a point somewhere like there. Let's finalize. So this is one of the sections that someone might choose. well there's there's no problem with choosing such a section but ideally what you want is to save time and then also to give more relevant information as opposed to doing so many things that are not really that important if we consider another case scenario let's take that off you can drag that and drop it into the delete icon which is here Yes, and it will be gone. And now let's uh, bring a section, simple one, which is from this other perspective. Uh, bring back a section, and let's take it through here, this sitting area. Finalize. In the same instance, uh, one may choose a section which is through here, and you can see just by the choice of a section, someone has cut their work into half. But then also. it's a much more interesting choice as opposed to something which is uh, horizontal because the other one is not cutting through openings which this one is so here you can see we are cutting through openings and we can also choose to cut through that same window so there the section starts to to show the relationship between the outside and the inside which was not the case before when we cut along this other a uh, plane and then here you you can appreciate things like the truss which should be under here which you will not very well appreciate better in the longitudinal section so choice of a section is really important because it will save you time and secondly it will reveal some important structural elements that you might want to show for example if you had a storied building you might want to consider cutting through the stairs because uh, the stairs are good structural elements that uh, show you the connection between the spaces below and the spaces above so and it's not all about it let's go back in the floor plan and uh, do away with this 3d cutaway for now if we go in here and someone took a section which is cutting through this wall for example so here it is and this is a very terrible section my brother my sister never do that because the essence of a section is actually to reveal what is happening within the building and also give 
some important information to technical personnel that are going to be working on the project. So doing something like this is horrible. Just don't do that. The other thing is when you're taking a section, you have to observe uh, both the windows and the doors. For example, you can move your section and make sure that you cut through this opening and that opening, which will make your section interesting. So how do we particularly place a section in this floor plan? So what you want to do is to go to document and then you get uh, a section which is here on this icon right here under document. And you can see that you have different options you have here, which you have here an infinite one and then also limited. So for our case, if we did not want to include this boundary wall, which is uh, in the background, we could choose a limited horizontal range. You want to click the first point on where you have chosen and then click this last point on where you have chosen and choose the direction. The next uh, place will be the direction where the elevation should, should face and then you can uh, increase this horizontal range to cover maybe the building. The style that I have currently chosen is what you can uh, choose when you go to settings by control T and then you can look through the options that you do have here. You change how the marker line should be. You can also change uh, the text and the style of it, which ever you want. The things that I particularly changed were the text markers. So you could make yours YY. And then also under here, we can change the marker geometry, which you're seeing here as the option I used as circle four. And that will be updated. So open that, which you can do by selecting it, right click and say, open with current view. This is what we get essentially. It is not particularly thrilling. So how do we make this thing better? This leads us to the second step that you need to take. So line weights, uh, this thing is a bit deficient in terms of depth. You can feel everything flat for now, but what can we do to add some depth? So we can use some of the settings of Archicad sections and elevations in order to add this depth. So right click and then go to section settings and in the settings, when this dialog box is up, Let's go to model display. This is what you really need. And uh, what Archicad is able to give us is just the cut elements and the uncut elements. So we can use that to put the cut elements closer and the uncut elements a bit far away by using line weights. So let's say we want interested in the uniform cut elements. You can check that. And when you do check that, you have these defaults. And I think they are pretty good because we have a 0.35 uh, pain weight, which is good. And then for the uncut elements, we can check this uncut element thing. And to emphasize this, let me just put this at maybe 0.13 to show you how far it will be a back. And those are the two major things. But before we leave here, we could also decide to uncheck transparency such that we are not seeing this WC which is showing up here. And that's pretty much it. And we say, okay. So you can see in just a few clicks what I was talking about. We have some things already in the foreground and then some other things in the background because the, uh, the things that are not cut have been sent back. And uh, when we enable true line weights, 
it becomes even more evident. So this is what you would have. And uh, for us to have uh, a drawing which is going to look good, we just need to balance the two. For example, if we do go back to the sections, settings, we can decide to make these ones also pop up a bit. Let's choose uh, maybe 0.18. Yeah, you can now see that the the things which were so much in the background are a bit closer. And uh, for just for the sake of the example, I want to uh, bring in something like a tree. I am going to import a tree, which you can find when you visit this site, pimpmydrawings.com. The link is in the description. You can have these free assets that you can use. Uh, human figures in different postures that are actually free for you to download and then also we can uh, get a tree from here when we go into the category of trees and choose any of what we see here so for this example we are going to use this one here just uh, download the dwg and wait for it to to load I will get it in the folder and all I need to do is just uh, drag it and drop it in my archicad so we can do away with this so the scale we can use what is it comes with we see how it will be we can always adjust it here it comes and you can now uh, explode into current view just right click and explode into current view now get this background and delete it so when you have deleted it you can um, select this the way it is uh, make sure that you have alt g it will be automatically grouped which is what you want but then you can also choose a line weight for it so for this one we can take it way back something like 0 0.1 point, point 0.1 just to to show you what i mean so when we put this for example in the background let's uh, grab it just behind the house here and you can see that right now we we actually have these layers we have this cut section we have the uncut section of the model and then when we add also the tree it adds another layer to it so the more of these layers that you have the more you know professional your drawing is going to look and the more it is going to look even better in terms of representation so this is in a few clicks you can uh, do this and it will instantly improve your drawings and of course if it is showing up here if it is showing through the drawing you can right click go to section settings and for that specific parts that are showing are in the cut elements which is here that instead of having a transparent background you can choose just uh, the background a white background for the background such that those disappear which is what you want so you can see that we have created this in just a few clicks so let's get at to stage three The details are what will elevate your drawings from what now is to something more professional because now it's start to test your understanding of what actually really happens in real life. How is the roof realized on site and what happens below the ground? Because I know that ideally we should be able to model all these things in the model workspace like we did when we were modeling but because as a designer we are most consigned on the things that we see we rarely 
take time to model the things that we do not see. So if you are really passionate about it, you can go ahead and model the things that are not seen by someone looking at the building, such things like the truss and also the things underneath. From here, what do we do? So it's up to you. You can go ahead and model a truss because Archicad actually has, when you go to design, design extras, you can have a truss maker there. If they have a truss maker, all you have to do is to draw in the lines and convert them into a truss. So you can definitely model everything the way you know it to exist on site. Another way we could do it, uh, since we already have agreed that the building is going to look like this and we are not going to make any further changes because when we do uh, the details here, most of them are not going to be associative and they are not going to adjust when you adjust anything in the model. So another way that you can approach this is to actually use the 2D features in order to finish up this thing. If we took this wall, we would imagine this wall to go down and sit somewhere, maybe on a footing. So depending on whatever you choose, you can decide to get, uh, go to document, get a fill. And this fill, we need it to have the same properties as that. So for now, let's temporarily uh, disable the, the line weight such that we are able to work. So you can begin now to draw uh, by picking what we have here in the properties. So if we chose uh, the 2D fill type and decided to have something like a common brick, which is what I have here. And in order to be sure, you select this, go to here and you can see that this is a brick material. So you can check that by going to options, element attributes, and you go to building materials. This building material, which is brick, has got common brick as its hatch. So you can decide to have the that fill come here and make it common brick and then this put in the parameters which we chose when we went to the settings of that specific one. So for example, uh, for this one, the overridden cut surface is 0.35 pen. So you can now begin to draw. So how far deep is this is all dependent on uh, the, the soils that you have, something like that. So you can put in a value that you, you like to see. And then an another thing, trying to check uh, this, this pen, it, it doesn't seem too much. So you can always go ahead and check what is happening in the settings. And you can see that we have a 0.13 pen, which is this one here, right there. So when you have this fill selected, you can choose this 0.113. And you can see that this one is now uh, a continuous wall. And you can drag by Ctrl D, and then you would imagine this wall to also proceed downward, and this one too. Of course, this is an interior wall which I made much thinner, reduced by 50. And you would also find that this wall is maybe shorter than the rest. And then you'd also imagine that uh, in elevation, you have this column which is uh, hidden behind the, the, the other side. So you can see that right now you can draw over this. And if your fill, for example, is not on top of this, you can always select it, right click and display order, bring it to front such that it is visible. And by so doing, you can be able to draw in the technical details that you need. 
So if we had a footing there, you just go to make this lightweight concrete, uh, choose the pen with 0.13, and then you, you you can override to have it also 0.35 which is good and then you can go ahead and put in these things the the footing and and really the sizes are that's technical information which you can research about and no for example it might be 600 by i like 200 and would sit something like there in the middle and that's where the plinth would sit and you would have something like that maybe for this one it would be even uh, smaller would be smaller but you know you, you this is what you would do in order to to step this drawing up by adding those uh, details in. Let's grab this by Ctrl D and place it around here. And we can also pick this space, click this one in order to drag it and put it around this place. What would happen, for example, on the trusses? So you would, for example, the trusses, maybe you might not need any hatching whatsoever. Leave it as background then and then you can uh, change the pen um, the um, trusses would be in elevation so you might give them like this 0.18 or something uh, and then you would begin to draw those trusses in be maybe like what even 60 would work so uh, and then you begin to rotate control e maybe you choose um an angle 45 mm. grab these things take it around and shape the corners by moving uh, such points as these to give that touch to it mm. and then ctrl m to mirror to have that angle continuous this is what i uh, i have done to get to so I would recommend some books which contain the knowledge of this technical information that you may need to do. But essentially, you can draft them in 2D if you don't want to have them in 3D. But ideally, you should be able to model them in 3D if you like. One more thing that you have seen that I have done is dimensions uh, grab here if you haven't watched my tutorial on this seven tips that you need in order to be able to dimension faster i recommend that you do watch it because in there we discuss how to dimension an elevation you can choose this one and in the settings you decide which type so for example in here uh, we chose something like that and then we chose uh, exactly something like that. The colors to match the drawings were made black. Black. So uh, for now, let me just uh, select those. And then when I say OK, I just click here and all those three points are selected. Double click and I can place those ones. So, of course, we have to change the settings. This dimension may not be necessary. And uh, while we select like these two points, we can decide to also add this point by control clicking to add the parapet wall height. And then also, like we discussed before, we can change how these things look by using something else for the textile and then we can also change uh, the um, size of the dimension markers maybe something small the size maybe it's a bit big let's try 1.5 0.5 and for the one we had the dimension was underneath you you, you can do that and put in the names by typing like here ground floor level you can also make them look however you want ideally 
these are small things but when you start to do them your drawing starts to look professional we also have some annotations on our drawings which you can find in a document just under the text here which you can also place in if you want actually you can uh, go to the setting of this actual roof change the classification the id from this to something like maybe roof notes why not you can see that it is already there mm, how cool is that so you can uh, change the label the label to something like uh, hard edged as opposed to a curve since our design is really more boxy than it is curved or you can choose whatever you like and when you put it there you can underneath type in the roof notes essentially this is what you do and in just three steps your drawings start to look professional you can say maybe 10 degrees remember the degree sign is here sub super or superscript and then you can remove it to say 10 degree roof pitch pitch uh-huh ideally every component that you have on your on, on your section can be annotated with a description so really uh this is all you need to know in order to be able to come up with uh, a section which i have completed here so in here you can see that uh, i added in like a human uh who is um and and by the way this this one is is an archicad object just type in man in objects and you will see it and then you can see the annotations talking about the coping talking about the blocks how are they going to be built uh, what thickness are, do they have the joints and all that talk about the beams talk about the under things the floor notes something about the floor what tile finish is there everything else and that's that and that's all there is so let me know if this was helpful um thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye